Recording is happening in three, two. There's a new store in town. Moms and dads, are you looking for a bicycle, tricycle, football? Looking for a model kit, chess set, doll? Something for game time, play time, fun time? Well, stop your looking and start to shopping at the store that has them all. The world's biggest toy stores, Toys R Us. The biggest selection, Toys R Us. You store in town. Toys R Us. What's up, Chris? Hello. <laughs> It's one of those days. It's one of those days, man. I welcome to uh, uh, Retro Rewind Club Volume Two. Have you? I, I don't know. But the second episode, and we get into an exclusive episode already. We're not playing around. No, we're not. We're not playing around. And we couldn't have done the 1986 or. Yeah, any any part of the any part of the show really without uh our our lovely gorgeous guests um and we have a fantastic show with a lot of like personal experiences a lot of like personal just love for toys um and man we're yeah like you said we're already on this and it's 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 volume two literally volume two with special guests it's amazing you know, yeah i'm excited because toys r us i think uh unfortunately the new generation of kids don't get to experience what we got to experience and many of you who are watching or listening did and so the shadow knows network is known for toys and movie reviews and films and all that good stuff and here at the retro rewind club we like to take it back and we're going all talk the way about back all the way back to toys r us really the store outside of KB that made yeah. all of the toy experiences come to life. So I'm excited. We're bringing on two special guests from the shadow uh, crew podcast. And one who has some really inside uh, information about working at Toys R Us. Yes. Without further ado, I present to you, Mr. Storm. Welcome, Mr. Storm. How you guys doing tonight? We're doing really, we're doing really, really good. We're happy you're here. We haven't seen you on a podcast yes. in at least a couple of minutes. I guess so. Um, <laughs> but we couldn't, we couldn't have done this episode without you. We want to thank you so much for traveling all the way to your computer. I know to show your face on this sexy, sexy podcast. The commute um, sucked, brother. The commute sucked. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I bet it did. <laughs> But I would like to present everybody listening to the Retro Rewind Club podcast, our golden goose, the man of the hour, the guy who got paid a phenomenal amount of money to work at Toys R Us and collect Indiana Jones crap, Dr. Brintley. Welcome to the show, sir. Hello. <laughs> Hello. You know, it's, it's a rare, it, yeah, it's a rarity that yeah. you get someone on the inside, yeah, uh, of 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 what is to be the most uh, the most epic toy empire retail establishment <laughs> of all time ever, ever. ever. Um, so we're we're excited. We're going to talk about our experiences, our favorite toys, the most disappointing, the one that you really wanted. We we'll talk about cool the aisles, the experience. Um, for those of you listening, drop drop a like, a subscribe, <laughs> comment. I'm sure a lot of you watching, listening, visited Toys R Us. Uh, and then also hopefully some some secrets, some toy exclusives from the past from Dr. Brantley oh. and much, much more. I see there is a name tag, Dr. Brantley. What what yes, is sir. this? Uh I, well, here I I'm mean a bit of a hoarder. <laughs> so I still have my Toys R Us name tag. Dang, that is that is worth more than any of the toys we're going to be talking about today. Uh, that's, that's, awesome. that's, that's like priceless right there. That's, that's, yeah. That is artifacts almost. Yeah, that's 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 fantastic. I got to say it's in such pristine shape. I figured there'd be like, you know, on the Mandalorian helmet, like battle scars. And <laughs> there's nothing which tells me either 
uh you never showed up it. for work yeah <laughs> he didn't never, never or or he was uh he was uh a managing from afar or maybe he was in the trenches but he could take good care of uh, his badge either way <laughs> that is for mr storm and dr brantley to be on this exclusive cast toys r us retro rewind so let's jump right into it yeah so any uh any thoughts so far? We 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 were just talking. We were just talking about this right before we started. Mm-hmm. Um, but have you guys got to experience what they're calling a new Toys R Us? Yeah, I've been no. to the. Then I've been to the new Toys R Us. Uh, I stay out in the Inland Empire out here in Southern California. So there is a um, Macy's out here that has the new Toys R Us. So far, you know. Uh, it is it, it, nothing like the original. The original wasn't, it's not a store within a store. The original was like a, its own standalone, yeah. basically the biggest toy warehouse you could ever walk into. Absolutely. It was you Costco, know? but with toys. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's and, why I have uh, no desire to see this basic thing. Yeah, no, it's not. But, you know, I've, I've heard that they're going to uh, actually move into their own brick and mortar. So hopefully they can get back some of the old nostalgia of what Toys R Us used to be. Yeah, I've been I've been into this disaster of a uh <laughs> like trying to bring it back and it is not the same. I took my daughter to it and I said this is not what your father experienced at all. I mean, first <laughs> off, covered, there's nobody like working eyes. there to begin with and I remember you could actually get some help uh at Toys R Us Dude. um but at Macy's look, we're not going to spend more than just a couple more seconds on the disaster that is Toys R Us. So anybody who's never actually set foot in one of the older Toys R Us, it is night and day difference just because you got Jeffrey the giraffe out front with a bunch of toys merchandise. It's night and day different. But I will say, I I think it's it's memory time, favorite Mm -hmm. memories as a kid. I remember walking in when I was a young kid looking for Halloween costumes and Toys mm. R Us had Halloween costumes up in the front and all the plastic, you know, masks and you Freddy Krueger hand and all that stuff, man. Mm. That was epic. That was like when you walked in and now, you know, you got to go on Amazon, you got to go to the, you know, the Halloween stores, but Toys R Us was like the place to find your, the cool kids when you were young, when you were young, you'd, you know, a little overpriced at times, but that was one of my favorite parts is Halloween at Toys R Us. What about all of you? What favorite memories, initial memories of Toys R Us? Oh, I didn't man. Really have a Toys R Us uh, when I was a kid growing up in the valley. I was at the mm. very far end of the San Fernando Valley and we didn't have one. So uh, it honestly wasn't really until I started working there that I was exposed to the monstrosity <laughs> that is Toys R Us in the big, big store. You know, it, it was like uh, as big as the Home Depot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, they're, they're massive. I remember for, for me, like growing up, I grew up in uh, in Anaheim, Anaheim, California, owned by Disney. But with uh, I think it was probably like with within like a 15, 20 minute drive, I had two different Toys R Us I could go do. There was there was the one that was in Fullerton uh, over by the In-N-Out on Orange Thorpe and something. I forget the other street. Uh, Harbor and Orange Thorpe, I think, was like a mat, like a massive Toys R Us. So big that they opened up Kids R Us up the street. Mm-hmm. Um, but. My favorite, my favorite part about going into Toys R Us is very close to Chris's with the Halloween stuff, but it was anytime there was like a, a craze or a commercial that would go on for like whatever the next big either video game was or toy, and it was like I, I just loved the feeling of walking in and getting slapped in the face with everything that was Toys R Us. You'd walk in and it was like video games at the one I went into is like tons of video games on the right hand side. And then you started getting down the aisles of like the RC cars, the RC boats. Then you have like the NES aisles and then you just had like G.I. Joe and it was just like in nonstop. Like I like like we said, it's it's like cost. It was just there's so much brain activity happening as a child that every other toy store just seemed to piss me off. Because it wasn't big enough. 
just wasn't big enough. Yeah, and I think for myself, I remember um, I was at that time, I, was, I lived in Pasadena, Altadena for a while. And then we had moved down to the South Bay and, um, you know, I think Hawthorne. And I remember on Hawthorne Boulevard, on uh, I think it's Delamo, Delamo Boulevard or maybe PCH, there mm-hmm. was the largest like Toys R Us you could find. Mm-hmm. And I remember my mom would be, you know, she, she, my mom was a hard worker. She worked two jobs and everything. And I remember she would take us on Friday. If we did everything cool, you know, we would got our grades good and everything. She would take us every Friday night for allowance to Toys R Us. And my brother and I um, had just discovered GI Joe. So like every week we were purchasing like, like two Joe figures every week in the GI Joe aisle. And that store was like the most magical place that you could ever walk in. Because it had everything that you ever saw, every character, and I remember my fr- I remember my first Joe too. Uh, it was uh, Doc, because uh, nice. I remember it was the first Joe that like it was a character that looked like me, and I was like, "Wow, he's the guy's a Doc," and um, I still have that character somewhere in the bin someplace. So it, That's awesome. there's nothing better than GI Joe, bro. And there's nothing better than the experience of walking through those. Those little uh, batons that you roll, roll in and you go through the section of the store. And, like, it was so massive. If you haven't been in one, you almost can't describe it other than it was epic, man. Yeah. That was, that was amazing. When you, when, you th- when you think about, like, Toys R Us, right, and, and like, growing up, um, when, when you were trying to find out, like, what toys you wanted there was always there was always the elusive toy that happened Mm -hmm. where you were always asking for it and you never got it and so i'm I'm curious to hear what everyone's um toy was that you wish you had gotten that you never got no well unfortunately mine was the greatest place that there's ever been made (laughs) it was it was the actual uh, aircraft carrier, the USS flag. I remember begging my mother, pleading with her. I said, no. And my mom said, you know, she was never one of those type of people that like to tell you no. She was like, let me think about it. Then she read the schematics. She said, she said, Ernest, this, this, this thing is almost <laughs> like seven feet long. And she said, it's like, so, you share, it's you so share, big. You share a bedroom with your brother. And it was like, uh, Take him out. Yeah, she was like, I said, well, I said, you could just take my bed out and everything. I'll sleep on the aircraft carrier. She was like, no, no. Still tell the dream. Every time I see it, it, a USS flag and I'm walking into any of the uh, stores or anything else like that or, or any conventions, it just always breaks my heart because it's like that was the ultimate thing that I wanted. And it just and I've never seen any of my friends ever have it either. So I'd never seen it in person other than at a convention. I okay. didn't ever really have anything that I wanted badly that I, you know, I just wasn't that kind of kid. Um, the only thing I can remember ever really wanting was the Slave One Boba Fett's ship mm. from Star Wars. And uh, I remember I was like, oh, I wished on a star and uh, all that kind of stuff. And I didn't get it at Christmas, but I think I got it on my birthday. And uh, so I was happy. At that point, I'm fine. Chris, what about you? Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that uh, you can't eat the, the aircraft carry definitely <laughs> is up there, right? I mean, that, so, that was so like, but like, I'm not going to, my parents can't afford it. Where the hell am I going to put it? But that was definitely one of those that, that existed out there. Um, I think, uh, probably like, I didn't have a lot of the turtles, uh, vehicles, Mm -hmm. the OG vehicles. I had a lot of the figures, um, but I don't think I ever had the original turtle van. Um, some of the other, like, you know, assault, uh, vehicles. So I would say that was probably cause I was super into turtles. I didn't get all Mm -hmm. that stuff. So no, no turtle blimp. No, you know, you, no. You know what? And I wasn't you know, like a, and I wasn't like a, a brat about it. But it's like mm-hmm. you know that if there's something that would probably one of those one of those things for sure. Wait, so are you telling me that I fulfilled one of your childhood wishes? Yes, 
Yes. <laughs> Nailed it. Yes. Well, Mr. Maddox, if the, dra- if the USS flagger pops up, you know, there's room in the back. <laughs> I got, there, yeah, yeah <laughs> I got, I got, I got you. I, um, I remember the USS flag, like in the box at a retail oh. store. And I was like, who is my, like, is my mom's car even big enough to put that shit in? <laughs> like, I didn't have so, any. It was so there was no massive. friends. I didn't have any friends that Mm-mm. had that. Like, who the Not heck one had that? Not one yeah. person I knew, man. And it I was mean, always elusive. It was kind of like the 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 whole like having a unicorn somewhere. It's like you know mm-hmm. you heard about it, but it was never really real. You know, it's yep. like they really they really made it like to scale so you could put all your other toys on it. It was like mm-hmm. insane. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. So I kind of have two. Um that i never had but the 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 most important one that i never got was the technodrome mm. the tech the tech techno techno dome for no. for ninja turtles mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um i dude i remember my friend had that and i was like i need that it has a giant eyeball on top like mm-hmm. what is what is going on here like what is going on and i remember that that was like that was what I wanted for the longest time. Mm. And that was until on a, uh, I think I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this was like, uh, like a Sunday after church or something like that. My dad was mm. like, let's go to Toys R Us. I was like, okay. And I remember walking down the aisle and I just started to get into GI Joe. I've never really been like a massive GI Joe collector, but I, I like started to get into it. And as soon as I saw this, I didn't want the tech. I didn't want that anymore. I now wanted the GI Joe Defiant Space yep. Shuttle. Defiant Space Shuttle. And that was, was massive, man. Yeah, no that that was super massive. And I think I, that I was, that retailed about five thousand dollars. I think as I, re- as I remember, <laughs> that's how unattainable <laughs> that toy was. Yes. But it is, it, and if you see them now, like oh, I, yeah. I, I just, I just watched um, the. Uh, youtube video of a of a toy store and they had a defiant mm-hmm. and they were selling it and i was just like i don't know where i would put that because i don't really have any joes but i also am like i really want that <laughs> but mm-hmm. i think with my collection being being ninja turtles right now i think that like the uh the techno the the technodrome i think would have to be my if i was to collect one now it would have to be that that's awesome. Yep. I love that, man. Well, and, and you know, I love the crank on that too, though, man. Yeah. Oh, mm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I think, I think along along with that too. Um, there's always there's always that one like toy that you did get <laughs> that. Mm. You had to like fake the smile and then put it in the back of your closet underneath all your <laughs> other toys. Do you guys remember? Do you guys remember what what that was? Did you ever get one of those toys? Mm-hmm. I think the the worst toy that I ever received, and probably wasn't Toys R Us, but it was uh, another retro, uh, you know, Rewind Club. You guys ever want to do it on Radio Shack? But you oh. remember, you, you remember those stupid robots that were inflatable but they had yep. the, like motor track and everything my father bought me one and he bought the same thing for my brother and literally within like a half an hour because it had a, and this was obviously i had, had to be in the early 80s as well because you know none of the toys were safe it had a metal antenna on it and i remember later on that night we were both in the hospital because it had scratched up our arms and scratched up our legs <laughs> because this thing had a, like a jagged edge on it. So we were getting tetanus shots after we bought that. But it was like a piece of junk, man. It was like the worst thing ever. It literally came in our house, scratches up. We go to the hospital. And then I remember my mother throwing it in the trash the night though. It was like that was it. So but that's another retro rewind club for you guys. Radio Dude, Shack. Radio Shack. <laughs> that's coming up. One of the worst ones I got was a uh Macho Man uh, Wrestling Buddy. Does everyone do you ever remember those things? Remember the wrestling those. buddies, the really the... hard pillows. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And it didn't look anything like Macho Man at all. And it was just a pillow. Like the, the ads were like, you could throw it and, you know, mm-hmm. suplex and all that. And I got it. I'm like, what is this piece of shit? <laughs> yeah. And it ended up just being on a, like, in, in a corner of a room. 
and you couldn't even display it or anything. It's just like, yeah. It's, and it, I remember those uh, those commercials too because it'd be kids jumping off the bed on. Yeah, them. And yeah, that that's what was, I you envisioned. That thing was doing. way thin. I know the hospitals were getting overrun. By what? Kids what was it? Arms and legs. Hold on, uh, we got to we got to look this up. This part of the show. Hold on. All right, it's uh, re- let's see what they have on eBay. Wrestling buddies. <laughs> Wrestling buddies. I'm sure they're going for. Oh time. man! Oh man! Oh, hold, hold on, hold on. We're bringing it up for those of you that are uh, watching this. You can see what we're doing, and for those of you that are listening, you can't see what we're doing. I just thought to point that out. Um. <laughs> okay, look at this. Yeah, <laughs> these yeah, are yeah, these yeah. are such crap. Yeah. Yeah, like these are horrible. Like the NWO one actually is pretty close. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty close. Where's but I didn't see Macho Man. Like, look at Ultimate the Warrior. Ultimate Warrior, not, God, yeah, no, Ooh, does not yeah. fare well. Oh, they have them in the boxes. Oh yeah, yeah. Chris, are these bringing you flashbacks? Yeah, but not in a good way. Yeah. Now, did your uh, did your Macho Man come with a, like a fake Slim Jim? That one at the end, oh wait, uh, just I forgot. Above, looks I like... forgot that they re re released them as Bleacher Buddies. Oh my goodness! Oh, my that goodness. one on the far right, it looks like uh, Wayne's this World. One? This one? <laughs> <laughs> that's John that Cena. That's John Cena. Yeah, <laughs> that is not. That is not John. That's not a good John Cena. What's this thing? Is that like? Diamond Dallas Page? That is oh, a my really God. messed up Diamond Dallas Page. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness! Oh, there's Macho Man. There you go. Come on, that looks exactly yeah, like him. Yeah, you know I can <laughs> hear creep- him saying "Step in the Slim Jim." I can hear it. <laughs> That's creepy, huh? But now, yeah, you, you can't suplex that, man. No. That's a those, those are those are a little creepy. The price on all those is way too high. By the way, oh, it's yeah. like 70, 80 bucks. Oh. Like that's that's a little that's a little <laughs> it's a little too high. <laughs> So, Doctor, Mr. Yeah, Doctor Brantley, what what was your uh, what was your failed toy? I think uh, there was a year I got a chemistry set, which mm. had all the little vials of stuff that Meh. you know were possibly toxic uh, <laughs> because you know they wanted you. There's a book that told you how to mix all these different things together, and it was like look it'll turn this clear liquid dark it's like uh, okay <laughs> that doesn't do anything yeah that's it was it these it was a giant blue case and a clear window and it showed all the different uh bottles oh, wait so you had the chemistry set where you can make meth with right yeah probably <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah just I, i'm just checking that was like before they started taking your id for like pseudofed they just threw that shit in the box for kids for christmas it was the uh, jeffrey's breaking bad uh <laughs> yeah, yeah it's with, <laughs> the giraffe is tweaking <laughs> out in his neck is jesse pinkman crack. play set <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah now man no um, I remember some of those like things, and I don't think I ever successfully did any of those like experiments or things that would turn into different things. I remember I had a thing where like you put the thing in and like it turned into like a worm that was like, oh yeah, that, I remember those. That never mm-hmm. worked. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know what the hell I was doing, but yeah, my oh, my, my dad didn't my dad didn't buy me any of that shit. My dad was like, you want to see something cool, and I was like, sure. He's like, go get a cup. And at the time, it was like styrofoam, you know, like those white styrofoam cups. <laughs> and, my da- and my dad's like, all right, watch this. And he takes uh, he takes baking soda, puts it in the cup, and then just throws vinegar on it. And he's like, see, <laughs> chemistry. <laughs> and that was free. Go away. That was my dad. Well, I know. I had a, a, a little cousin that had the Easy Bake Ovens. Oh, and yeah. My, my brother oh. and I. Those things worked. I don't care what anybody says. Those yeah, they were worked. unsafe. Yeah. But they worked. It is yeah. like, you know, the cookies would come out. You'd be like, these aren't too bad, actually. <laughs> yeah, but cooking with a light bulb is not exactly the best way. Uh, well, Taco Bell's been doing it for years. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Taco Bell, Taco Bell's been doing it for years, and they even had their, uh, like, uh, their, their, uh, 
version of an Apple announcement the other day, by the way. I know it's a little sidetracked, but I, I but that. I watched it. It's mm-hmm. interesting. Yeah, you know, you know, one thing. Um, did everyone say there? Uh, Chet, did you say you're a failed toy? I, I, I did not. Well, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> this, is a, this is a dad story again, but it, it's about a toy. Uh, I remember I, I really wanted a, <laughs> uh, I really wanted like a dump truck, right? I don't, I don't know why. It was like dump truck. And my dad, my dad got me one. But it wasn't the one I wanted. I was super depressed. It was like he got me like my dad had this weird sense of humor. Like I wanted a, a like a, a dump truck I could like push around, you know, and like mm-hmm. dump it out. My dad came home with a matchbox car. Um, but he finally got it for me. And I remember I said something to my mom that he didn't like. And I was yelling at my mom or something. And my dad's like, oh, OK, I see how this is. And he he took I was I was probably five. I think he took that thi- he took that toy outside, set it on a wood log, and chopped it in half with an axe, <laughs> and and told me to go throw it away. <laughs> and my dad just replaced that three years ago. <laughs> that was like my most failed toy ever because it was like I wanted it. He got me a matchbox, and then I had it, and then he chopped that shit in half with an axe. <laughs> You turned it into a transformer. That's pretty, yeah. uh, pretty nice. Pretty nice. Yeah, it, was, it was great. Yeah, uh, I, I did remember years. one thing that I got, and this one I bought myself out of the back of a comic book. It was the Sea Monkeys. Oh. That did not work at oh. all. The little, the little. I got the little tank shrimp. with little uh, magnifying parts in it. Yeah, and followed the all the instructions. I got the little food. I got the cleaner. Never worked. I'm still waiting for my refund on those x-ray glasses. So I don't know if it's ever coming in, but, you know, maybe. Well, it's now time to go into a next segment on Toys R Us, which is ad reaction. So we're going to flash some of the uh, pretty uh, famous uh, ads uh, that were in the catalogs or the weekly papers. And I want to get everyone's thoughts on those. Um, yeah. So uh, let's... Uh, Let's uh, start with our first one. I'm going to pull it up here and uh, get everyone's take on uh, what you're seeing. So, first one. These, but by the way, these ads are going to really probably piss us off, and it's totally fine. Oh, yeah. to be ups- well, yeah. It's fine to be upset about it. Um, <laughs> this is a little less uh, a little less family friendly podcast. Just an <laughs> FYI, so uh, prepare to be upset because <laughs> these ads piss me off. All right, um, I'm I'm sharing it, so I don't know why it's not popping up. I think uh, chat, you might have yeah, the yeah. controls. There it is. Uh, the Look at that! It was only a hundred and nineteen dollars. Well, this is in like what eighty seven, eighty six. Um, so, but yeah. one hundred nineteen. Now the the actual USS flag was at a flat rate of a hundred dollars. So that's interesting to define the due to probably inflation. But yeah, well the, the well the Defiant just had just had multiple parts. It did too, yeah. And it yeah. can go into space. Yeah, it was obviously. just a boat. Mm-hmm. Well, now what are mm-hmm. what are battle beasts? I don't remember battle beasts. Uh, battle beasts were awesome. They were uh rip off of Transformers. Of course. Let's see how much they are on, on uh eBay. Battle Beast. Oh yeah. Now they're not, they're not they don't look like they've well, I don't know. They have some that are carded that's like one ninety nine. Hmm. Yeah, well obviously they didn't go that well. And then we're no. gonna we're gonna pop open another uh ad here for your viewing pleasure. Get everyone's mm-hmm. reaction. A, a, even a, a much more throwback. Look at this one. Oh, oh, oh Doctor Brantley, you were there for this ad. <laughs> mm-hmm. You had now, look, why, why does why this. does this Spock was, look like he's doing Zoolander's face? I don't this know. Was drunk. I mean, when is the last time you've seen something hand? Very drawn? rare. Very rare. Um, the children's bargain town. So interesting. Hmm. Uh, That's okay. weird because I don't think you could bargain anything for prices. It's just set price. 
Save Wrong. this supplement. Oh, oh, I will tell you. <laughs> Toys R Us had a policy that if there was another store that had it for lower advertised, we would match it. Ooh. So anybody that had a KB thing or any other store, as long as it was printed in the paper, we would match that price. Hey, I have a question, uh, Dr. Brantley. Was Jeffrey a cool guy? <laughs> we did have him once at the opening of the store. A uh, guy came, uh, but he was in character the entire time. Mm. Cool. He never showed himself without uh, the entire neck on. Good. He never took the neck off and started, uh, you know, smoking yeah, I like, a cigar. I like, I like, I like Jeffrey. He was a cool guy. And now that guy is probably um, Denzel Washington, probably. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. It's tough going for a while. We got our next ad uh, coming up here, and that is this one. Oh, this is a good one. Look at that. Jeffrey with oh. posing. Oh, look oh, at man. that. Mm. Look at all those that, figures. I had no mode? idea Jeffrey was so built. I is, he, is he a Motu figure right now? I think he's Conan the, the giraffe or something. I don't I know. But look so, at E.T. He yeah. got yeah, E.T. I remember E.T. Masters. Mm -hmm. Is that an Indiana? It looks like an Indy Mr. Yeah, T. Indy I mean, mm -hmm. if you had all these in packages, oh. you'd be a wealthy person. I think those are the, the Galoop figures, right, from the E.T. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those are yeah. those are those are still high high oh, yeah. on eBay right now. We we looked that up on uh on episode one and uh Mr. T did not age well in those toys. No, he did not. <laughs> nor in life nor in the toy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's he was just over it. All right. And then uh we're gonna pop up in the next one here. We've just got a couple more in this segment here. We're gonna go a little bit newer new newer uh well, not newer, but maybe just a little bit more recent than that. Look at this. Here we go. Um, look at that. Look at those uh, consoles. Oh, hobbies and crafts. Yeah. Sega. Man, the consoles, huh? Nintendo is one. Mm -hmm. I still Giant have that Nintendo Tinker system, toy. too. Do you? Yeah, well, yeah nice. I do. Yeah, it's sitting in a, it's in a storage bin, too, somewhere. But yeah, you I have, have two of those. I said I have that Nintendo system. I still have it. Oh. You'll never outgrow us, but the economy will. Is uh, <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Yeah, hey, did look, anybody ever get a bike from Toys R Us? Because I never purchased my bikes were either from no. Sears. I, I or got one. Yeah. I did. Uh, I got. I got a. I got a Huffy mountain bike. Okay, I remember Huffies were big. Yeah. Yeah, my, no. my my. I remember specifically it was gray with like. Uh, like turquoise, fuck, like splatter on it. Mm -hmm. uh, I wrote that. I wrote that for like years. Okay. Yeah. Let me tell you about the floor models. It <laughs> sucked because what they would do is, hey, we got a new bike in. You guys put it together after we close. <laughs> so you know, it was like parents on Christmas morning. And you would just hear different people like, what the God, I, 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 there's too many things here. I, <laughs> hey, do you have a wrench, you know, and putting together all these things. Some of them were not safe, but kids would still be uh, riding them in the aisles. Yes, like they all would the be. Power wheels, mm -hmm. all the bikes, all the little tykes houses, all that stuff that was displayed. We had to take one out of the box and put it together. It was awful. I don't remember. Did they did they display that giant ship from GI Joe? Our store did. We wow. it was because we had a gigantic store, so the entire mm -hmm. it was like three aisles to the back, so the entire middle section was mm -hmm. open, and we had like racks of bikes, racks of Power Wheels, mm -hmm. and all the different play sets you could get. Mm -hmm. The you know uh, the mm -hmm. kitchen or the house. Uh, mm -hmm. anything that had to be built and displayed because it looked better than just a box sitting there we had to build and put it up yeah i remember that was that was one best thing about you could you could see it and you knew like wow and that's that's the reason why my mother was like there's no way she was like my god <laughs> like, you know. uh the thundercats toy what i wonder if the shop late huh Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, was open until like it was like 11 or midnight uh, it was midnight. crazy huh? midnight. it was midnight uh mm -hmm. from 
Black Friday to mm-hmm. Christmas Eve. Because Man. and Christmas Eve, uh, you know, like I just thought that parents came in, it's like they didn't get anything until Christmas Eve to pretend to kids that you know Santa came in, and a lot of people treated it like that. They would just mm-hmm. Christmas Eve lines out the door. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was awful. Like, first of all, most everything is gone by that point. So, you know, uh, we had lots of fights, uh, grown men uh, going after a <laughs> Tickle Me Elmo, you know, uh, and fist fights in the store. How many did you have? How many, how many fist fights did you have in, in your time? There was one bad one and then a couple of scuffles. Uh, but people were always angry and yelling. Uh, one of the problems was, uh, you know, they had tickets for the high value uh, merchandise. So you had to take the ticket out, yep. go pay for it, and then come to mm-hmm. my security merchandise store uh, by the back door. And we put out m- just printed tickets and shoved them in there. And I was like, well, shouldn't we just put as many tickets as we have items in the back. It's like, oh, no, some people will just take it and then leave it and whatever. So Um. inevitably, what happened is people would pay for something, (laughs) come to my door and say, here's this. Oh, I'm sorry, we're sold out. What do you mean? I just bought it. I paid for it. Uh. And then they'd have to go and get a refund in the gigantic refund line because there was that too. And so wait, I just waited like a half an hour to pay for this thing and now I have to wait a half an hour to get my money back. People were not happy. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm especially if you're buying it. Nintendo or some oh, crazy like oh, Game so Boy pissed. or one of those. And I remember there was only a couple of places that you could buy like video games, like consoles yep. in the early days. Yep. And it was a madhouse going to Toys R Us for any of that <laughs> video game stuff, man. You know who had you know who had okay. Uh, you know who had a good selection of consoles and video games if i couldn't find it at toys r us i don't know if you guys remember fedco yeah i do remember mm-hmm. Fedco. Mm-hmm. fedco was like one of the first like membership type places but they always had really good selections of of console stuff so if we couldn't find it at toys r us we were heading up to buena park to fedco mm-hmm. yeah well dr brantley um obviously as a veteran of the Toys R Us Wars. Um, one of the things that uh, we're curious about is all, you know, there's tons of exclusives out there now, Target exclusive, Walmart exclusive, exclusives here, mm-hmm. there. And there was a lot of that in Toys R Us's history. As you recall, any standout exclusives that people would fight and, uh, He's got you it. know, well, break. here we go. This is why someone fought because he bought them before the parents got them. So Toys R Us exclusives. Yeah, wow, look at man. that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, people probably thought we were joking about how serious we were taking like volume two, but like, come on. Yeah, we got, we got, we got, yeah, we got, we got experts on the, on the matter here. Yeah, because I, mo- I loved all the Batman uh, action yeah. figure stuff. Mm. And you know, I thought, oh, Toys R Us exclusive. Well, I better get those. And uh, yeah, they're not worth so much. What was the what was like a couple items if you look back that people? I mean, we we know the tickle me Elmo's and stuff, but what was something? What, what were people pissed about that they would literally fight in the parking lot over? Power Rangers. Mm. Oh shit! Yeah, that was right when Power Rangers came out, and so that first Christmas after that anything power rangers because they didn't make that many to begin with because they just didn't know if it was going to sell or not and they didn't hand them out so much so uh a lot was like oh we have the pencils with power rangers on it and uh, little notebooks and that kind of stuff and so there were a ton of those but the actual figures uh they had like the swords and stuff Mm. like that those were gone almost instantly and then we had Kids crying, where's the Power Rangers? And the parents then calling to us. It's like, hey, where's the damn Power Rangers? Yeah. <laughs> and those That's figures crazy. ain't worth Jack either, right? I don't think they're. No. I don't think so. No. Mm-hmm. No way. Yeah. And no way. I will say the diabolical thing about Toys R Us 
and a lot of people don't know this, is they sold baby stuff, diapers, formula, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. baby food, and they sold all of it at a loss. So if it was like diapers for $5 at the store, Toys R Us sold it for three fifty. But it was all in the back of the store. So you had to go all the way to the back to get mm -hmm. it, going by all the aisles of different exactly. toys and stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you had a kid that was older than the baby, they were like, oh, mommy, I want that. Oh, mommy, get me that. Mm -hmm. And so they, they just knew it's like, yeah, we're going to sell all of this stuff at a loss. So people will come into the store, especially lower income families, mm -hmm. and trick them into getting other stuff for their kids. Five dollar diapers, and you got the uh, USS flag in your shopping cart. That's, how <laughs> that's, <it. laughs> that's what it is. Oh, like you can afford it now, right, Mom? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Trying to Shame land the on defiant you. on the flag. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, I never thought about that actually. <laughs> could you could you imagine if you were that kid back then? Like you have like the USS flag with the defiant on top of it, right? And and then the technodrome just hanging out in the background. You know, and I think that's why you see so many um older collectors now actually seeking that stuff out. Because it's the thing, I don't think other than maybe the the two or three top percenters in that time period really had those items, man. You know, it was it's just like um like one of my favorite other playsets I never got was uh, the Boulder Hill playset for Mask. You know, the the cars, oh, and all Hill. the other vehicles. Oh yeah, you could purchase those, but trying to find Boulder Hill was always a problem at any Toys R Us or any other store. It was like the one exclusive item, but all the cars and everything were all over the place. So I wonder back in the day, because, you know, now this exists pretty mm -hmm. significantly with like collectors knowing when figures hit the shelves, resellers, et cetera. Was that happening back in the day with like G.I. Joe stuff as well? Like people would come in because yes. I remember as a young, you know, as a kid or even up, up through like as a teenager, I'd come in and you, you'd, I'd buy some G.I. Joe's, but you'd never find. Cobra, if you could get Cobra Cam Commander on a peg hook. That that you might as well buy a lottery ticket because that never existed, right? Yeah, it was always like the fringe characters that you would normally see unless you stumbled upon an inventory day that got fresh put on the shelf. I, I'm assuming again that they dealt with those things too, right? Resellers coming in, buying up all the good shit, Star Wars, G.I. Joe, you know. Yeah, actually. <laughs> More props. These are some that were huge at the time. It was the X-Men. Oh, uh, oh wow. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, he brought him out. <clears throat> Iceman. Venom. Mm, yeah. And the Toy uh, Biz. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Silver Surfer. Yeah. And some of these oh, where man. we would have the collectors come in and they would be like, Oh, did you get the new box in? Like they would be there Thursday morning because they mm -hmm. knew we got a shipment on Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. And so they would be first one. It's like if it's not out on the shelves, it's like, hey, uh, did you get the box in? I, let me see it. And so they would rifle through. Also got the uh, Gambit and Wolverine. Damn. And uh, those are some like... mint figures, by the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, this we keep our collections come... good, man. Yeah, this <laughs> is coming from the guy that's like, I only collect Indiana Jones propping, like, popping yeah, that he's all popping these, out like, like, oh, <laughs> exactly. no. he's got a, a bunch well, of the Star Trek toys, a bunch of he's got a lot more. He's got the original yeah, Toy Biz this line. This like, stuff, all this like, what the hell? These were the ones, USS flag. <laughs> <laughs> these were the ones that people were like going for, and it's like, oh, you know, Silver Surfer is hard to get, or Iceman or Soren is hard to get, and so people would come and take those hard to get ones right out of the box and leave you know hey there's a million cyclopses and gene grays uh, they, but you couldn't find certain ones did they did they allow you to do it as an employee like on a break or something well i did uh because <laughs> well, i know you did obviously because you have them but i'm saying like i'm saying like was it was it like uh you were allowed to do it or you you guys just did it we just did it it okay. wasn't like a policy or anything but uh you know the, the they were pretty cool at my store where it's like yeah you know it's like hey uh i'm gonna put this uh 
back here and I'll get it with my employee discount at the end of the night. And it would be sold out. People would be asking for it. It's like, oh, no, those are Julian's. Yeah, you know, that's the worst thing. I think it was right around that time period when that's when we started seeing the the resellers and the you know the people that would go and take 15 items out of the store and everything and they were mm-hmm. be calling the night before the toys r us or something that's when we started to see like the actual change from like you know you used to go into toys r us it'd be on the shelf you could pick it up walk to the front there's no problems and then it was like somehow there'd be a elusive figure that you could not find because somebody would go in there and buy 15 of them so you know it started coming into the bad trends towards like the 90s was a really bad trend in that and it still continued today now yeah what was your favorite aisle oh there were there were several uh, man, you know for myself obviously uh, it was the action figure aisle exactly mm-hmm. dang <laughs> aliens <laughs> and oh, terminator yeah. mm-hmm. yep the, the 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 blisters aren't even colored on yours. No, no, no. He keeps the stuff in prime. They they've been in a box, uh, along with uh, the name tag for thirty <laughs> years now. <laughs> <laughs> Never seen sunlight. That's crazy. I I I can't remember. Do, Toys R Us, they had like a big Lego section, right? They did. Oh, yeah. They had a huge like, Lego it was an entire aisle, just like it was Barbie. An, enti- an entire aisle, and they had like built the sets, right? Like the pirate mm-hmm. ships, some all of that them. stuff. Yeah. Like any, the any, pirate the... ship was always in glass case, I remember. Yes. Yeah. Plastic mm-hmm. case, like yeah. in the middle of the mm-hmm. section. Yeah. Yeah, because that that was that was probably one of my that was probably one of my favorite aisles because I actually got to see a Lego set built that I would never be able to afford, mm-hmm. and it was just like it was cool to see it. Um, but I I loved the section with mask. Mm-hmm. Julian, did they have the the guys in the store build the Lego sets? Too? Oh yeah. I, oh, luckily, geez. I never had to do that. But while you know, I'm sitting here making bikes. <laughs> there's yeah. some people. That, where the hell is that? it's this big? <laughs> oh, that's well, back yeah. in the day where the instructions <laughs> sucked too. Yeah, mm-hmm. Lego they, masters. Yeah, <laughs> like, Legit Lego Lego Masters. Masters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're probably a guy that was making never, four fifteen never got hour the credit, man. Yeah. That could look at a box and be like, "I could do that." At Toys R Us is where yeah. they got the idea for the Lego movie because sure. it was everybody that was trying to build the sets. Like, mm-hmm. everything's good, everything's awesome, everything's cool. And that's how they got the Lego movie. Yeah, no, for obviously for myself, it was uh, GI Joe, but I love the uh, the the mascot too. Because the mascot was like mm-hmm. right next to G.I. Joe. And then Always. it would be the Star Wars aisle. I was never big into like a lot of the Star Wars characters. And I remember that Motu uh, line, uh, Masters of the Universe. Man, that was a heck of an aisle as well. It's so massive. Yeah. Like they had, like, I've never seen in a toy experience where it was like everyone bought, like, I remember the, the Batman aisle. You know, uh, like every major studio, whether it was Mattel, it was Hasbro, it was, um, you Kenner. know, Playmates, Kenner, and they each had devoted shelf space and they were always massive because those aisles wasn't like you were like a half aisle in Target. Like it'd be damn near like almost like a full entire, like maybe half of the field worth of an aisle. And it stacked to the top too, man. It was always amazing going into that store. Oh, and... You're asking these like 16 year old kids to get stuff off of this mm-hmm. top shelf. You know, it was not a safe work environment. I remember I had to climb in the back, climb up these racks <laughs> that we made to get like heavy or- bicycles at a box and like throw them down to the guy that's, you know, like a story down. It was uh, very dangerous. Were, were those uh, the orange racks? Yep. It was yeah. yeah the orange um, the orange breakaway pillars. racks mm-hmm. yeah it's like um, you might wonder what breakaway means it means when you crawl on them they yeah, just right. break away <laughs> so before we're gonna jump into the next segment and pick Doctor Brantley's brain a little bit more because I want to know what was behind the <coughs> the, the the word that you, like what like I, it was just a yeah, we dude behind in this, a cage yeah. we we need to know yeah so the story behind the cage is what Mister Brantley so. That was a little half door with a little shelf. There was a person working 
uh, at the counter. Behind them was the big warehouse stuff, all the bikes in uh, boxes, all mm -hmm. the big stuff, uh, power wheels, which those were the worst because they were massive boxes. It took like two people to carry it. And so we had to also help people out to their cars. But on the side of that was the security stuff, all the really high stuff, the Super Nintendos, Genesis, and all the games. And back there, it was just shelves with every game you can imagine. And it's like, okay, here's the ticket. Go back and, you know, find it. And it was just a mess. It was a small area, but it was just packed floor to ceiling with merchandise, all the real expensive stuff. I would imagine something like at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark where they like put it into that massive <laughs> warehouse. <laughs> oh man, I think I think that those I think those days I, I just ugh. we were we were we were sitting back uh, sharing pictures. And there was one where they were they were stocking the shelves, and it was just all GI Joe boxes, and it was mm. like, man, to just be back, be back at that. Well, yeah, and you're right. That flag uh, box oh, yeah. was monstrous, yeah. and so I think we could only put like two and On stack the them two mm -hmm. deep, and that was it. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's like yeah, if we wanted more, <laughs> but they didn't sell. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. like maybe one person that was uh, the rich parent would come mm -hmm. in and buy it. You know, like the divorced dad trying to buy his but child I, love. <laughs> I think that's why you're probably able to see so many that still mint in condition in boxes. So many, because mm -hmm. I don't think that thing sold extremely well at all. And because a lot of people just like a hundred dollars and eighty five, eighty six. That was a lot of money, man. You know? Yeah. I mean, look at that. There's never going to be a time where every, like, literally, probably the entire line, the figures, the toys, mm -hmm. the vehicles from that, like, is all in one section. You'll never be able to find that again, right? The, the shelf no. space too limited at a Target mm -hmm. or even a Walmart to get that kind of space. But look at that. You could literally walk in and probably buy all of Wave 1 mm -hmm. of everything plus you know, maybe yeah. some other stuff. And if you look, they have the USS flag box next yeah, to it. And I, I remember too, there was, uh, I was watching a documentary on um, the GI Joe, the relaunching of when they went to the three and three quarter figures. And initially the executives of Hasbro were um, very unsure if the line was going to do well. So everything, vehicles, characters, and the first wave had to all be to purchase everything $100. So that meant like if they came out with the tanks, the the planes, the figures, that first wave, everything had to be within a hundred dollars because they wanted to make it extremely affordable. And then the line blew up, and then of course, you know, the, the flag was a hundred dollars on its own, but it was still the most massive playset that I think I've ever seen. Now, can you put that uh picture back up for a second? Because you can see how unsafe this was, <laughs> because at the very top shelf. It is stacked oh, yeah. with all this stuff. And we had idiots working <laughs> at the store. Okay. Oh, That's yeah. There's, why... like, there's like no guards or anything on these, huh? These are just mm -hmm. stacked boxes, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, that's just. And hopefully the person stacking them didn't put them like leaning a bit mm -hmm. because that happens. So, you know, you'd be walking down an aisle in here. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Well, uh, that's why I was in security and UPC uh, doing the pricing uh, towards the end because I was like a responsible uh, young adult. <laughs> and there were people in their 20s working there that were like uh, dumb. D uh, there's no other way to put it. They just did stupid things. And uh, I'm yeah. just trying to figure out what box he's putting up there. I. I think it's a Night Raven. It's the uh, the Cobra I Night Raven. It's Mr. Storm to be able to look mm -hmm. at this. Hey, I know. Hey, this dude, this <laughs> no dude looked at it. This dude looked at it for like a second. Was like, oh, I guess I didn't oh. pay attention. That's the night. That's uh, that's 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 Night Night Raven. It's 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 I, it's, a, it's a curse, brother. I, I had six. I had six of them. And speaking of Legos, this is a. Uh, 
uh, more of a recent before Toys R Us's closure. But oh, look yeah. at that section. That's that's an awesome section. That's Again, better you'll than never, the Lego store. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you'll never yeah. find. Wow. And you see that little uh, plastic uh, clear thing in the middle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's where they built all the stuff and mm-hmm. had it under lock and key. Well, they Same couldn't with... have been that dumb over there because, you know, you know, you can't be an idiot putting Legos together. So they had to have the most responsible people. Have you ever put Legos together? Them. Yes, I have. And it's, it's, yeah. it's not an easy trait, brother. Well, that's why sometimes we were there late, late oh, yeah. into yeah. the night mm-hmm. because, you know, if we're closing up, there's some idiot that's, you know, I, I got to put this boat together. And uh, that doesn't look like a boat, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and, you know, have like 10 people trying to build something. Yeah, yeah, um, I could I can understand that. If you built like that, um, the Statue of Liberty or any other thing, um, that wasn't going to take 15 minutes, man. You, you know what? Like looking looking at that picture, mm-hmm. I realized what it was about Toys R Us that was like just made you feel like you were there. If you look at that picture, we don't have to bring it back up, but it, if you just looked at wh- which one's this? Okay, yeah, this is another example. All right. If you just look at this picture and look at how effing high up it goes, like yeah. look how tall that is. Mm-hmm. You didn't have the ability to see shit else except mm-hmm. for the section you were in. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what really like honed it in for me was like, if you if we go back to that Lego picture, like it's a, it's just giant walls. It's like mm-hmm. t- giant yellow, like Lego everything. This one Nintendo sixty four would like right now. If I was if I was this age, right now with Nintendo sixty four coming out, I'd be drooling and buying this whole entire damn mm-hmm. wall. Mm-hmm. But again, if you look at it, I literally can remember even this stupid ad on top right here on N64. And it was like that. They had it for like N64. Then they had like the SNES mm-hmm. section, the NES section. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that by the time 60, N64 came out, they were still selling the the NES, right? Yeah, they still or, were. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they still sold that. Mm-hmm. And so, but I, I remember specifically now, like, yeah, it, it was so tall. Mm-hmm. Just like tall, maybe I, maybe I was. I mean, obviously, I was. You were short. shorter, but well, <laughs> but also they did that on purpose. It was like the one major retail thing because they did the store like a snake. You would have to yeah. walk in, and then you immediately go through like the baby sections with strollers and everything, and then you have to cut, and then there'd be like Lego and Barbie. Then you have to cut another aisle. There'd be bikes. Yeah. And they, you literally had to walk the entire store. Well, they they were oh, the original I- IKEA. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in fact, like, if IKEA wanted to make money, they would just put toys in their store. Yeah, no, it was it was brilliant the 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 inside marketing because, and then right up near the front because the most expensive stuff would be the Power video goes. games and the consoles and everything. And they absolutely that was the one where you had to walk into another area and it would lock on you and it would be exclusive, you know. Because but you would, but it didn't it. matter because you were so into it. Mm-hmm. You're like, ah, whatever you gotta do. I just want to go in and stare at all the stuff I can't afford right now. And also, I've... too, you can play all the demos of, of certain games because they would actually have controllers and TVs. Yep. And so, if you want to, like, you know, play it before you got it, you could. You know, they that's the beauty of it. Now, when you walk into Target, it's like it's cold aisle. You know, there's absolutely no expression of like trying to because you could literally stay in a Toys R Us for hours. It was very oh, easy to easy. stay in one for hours. You know, it was kind of like a like the library. You know, it's just you're in there and you're walking down aisles and everything because they knew it would take a massive amount of time. You just don't see that in retail anymore. Yeah, I think it was like '92 when the SNES came out, mm-hmm. and so we had the you know displayable display, mm-hmm. and that was always someone there. If it wasn't kids, it was an adult mm-hmm. that was hot, and you know, kids were like. Hey, can I play? It's like back off, kid. <laughs> and also, too, uh, Doctor Brentley actually his store because he was the second towards the rest they put in our area. His store actually was on like hollow ground because it was in uh, it was in Hawthorne, and it was where the original Mattel uh, um, corporate center was that they actually had in the Hawthorne when they did it from the original days of like, you know, the executives of Barbie and everything else. And then they ended up 
tearing that down, building the Toys R Us, and then they moved. Now Mattel is in El Segundo, where they've been since what the early nineties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, Barbie definitely had its own. Like there was a, a wow. giant thing over mm-hmm. each end of the aisle, and the entire aisle was pink. Mm-hmm. And it was every Barbie, the Dream House, the Cars, Skipper's the, Malibu all the co- thing. All the collector ones were like on the top, the like holiday and, collector ones. Well, we had a glass case for the Bob mm-hmm. Mackie Barbies, mm-hmm. which was like $100 even back then, wow. which was ridiculous, you know. But uh, some people did buy it. Mm-hmm. Now, you can find at- everything, big or small, from Toys R Us. It didn't matter. Expensive, inexpensive. Mm-hmm. It was all there. Back to school, all that stuff. Uh, you know, anything that a kid needed or wanted was in a Toys R Us. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at look at this, and how much value in money it would be. Oh. Today. <laughs> <laughs> Chris is like, and so let me show you uh, the other side of my camera. It's actually this. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? Oh man, all of yeah, those. Is- that's a that's a, a basically a college tuition now. <laughs> yeah. It's on that wall right there. Damn right. Yeah. <laughs> now I did have a question because um you know with any with any retailer uh, there are as you as you said uh, uh, Dr. Brantley there are idiots that are working there. Uh, did you ever have any uh, is, issues like this? I, I'm I'm going to pull this as an example being a t- uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle uh, fan. So let me just pull this photo because I, I don't quite understand the uh, the marketing uh, or the, the price tag here. Uh, so maybe, maybe if you could explain wacky action turtles. <laughs> Now, any any mishaps in your uh, in your time there with uh, with prices or names or well, the way it worked, and I was uh, responsible for some of the signage uh, because what we would do is get a list of the new stuff coming in, what had to have the sign and what didn't, and this is when we had computers but it wasn't like networked computers so they would send like a book that said okay this is what you call it this is how much it is and so we would print it so if there was some stupid person or just didn't understand or couldn't spell uh they would type this stuff in and (laughs) print it out and uh, if nobody caught it, it stayed out there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there was plenty of uh, stuff that was like, hey, you know, that's that's not what this is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want a wacky action turtle. You know what I mean? Yeah, if I had a choice between Teenage Mutant and Wacky <laughs> Action, I'm going to Wacky Action. They're only, they're only $4.99. <laughs> so, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, the now, the, the last thing uh, that I have uh, this evening is uh let's not forget the most iconic toys r us clip of all time in motion pictures from (laughs) (laughs) uh, from the blues brothers Uh, oh man and did this actually dr brantley did we ever see any uh crazy happenings people driving through the store or a lot of space uh, outside of fights uh no uh nothing that bad at least while i was there uh he's like but i do have stories <laughs> yeah uh well uh you know like personally uh i had someone try to pawn off a uh, counterfeit money to us and i looked at it and it didn't feel uh like real money because you handle real money every part of the day and it's like wait a second and then i noticed that it was the, you know the thing at the bottom where it says like uh for all debts public and private but it had like a whole thing that was like for all debts public and private and something something and something i'm like that, that's Bad not, that ain't real <laughs> <laughs> and that's when uh they started having those yellow markers mm-hmm. to go and it's like mm-hmm. oh if it made a dark line this is fake <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah 
you did, you ever, tell did, did you ever cut up credit cards? No, uh, but we did decline people, and mm. uh, you know, but we never did that. We would just give it back to them and say, "I'm sorry, do you have any other form of payment?" We we weren't that brutal, mm. especially in front of their kids. Yeah. Any any uh, any famous run-ins at the store, Mister Brittner? Yes, uh, one Christmas. Burt Ward came into the store. TV's Robin. Okay. From the '60s Batman and Robin. Did anybody and was was he still famous at this time? Because no, you can't really anchor towards a '60s you, Robin. Well, he Robin. didn't look like Robin, right? He was uh, older. He was uh, bigger. He had a a, a big belly, and uh, so. Most people didn't recognize him, but as a kid, I loved the Batman show and used to watch it. So I knew who it was, but uh, he came in and like went to the manager and said like, hey, I need uh, so, like a, a assistant, some uh, shopper to help me go and get some stuff. So we went uh, with two shopping carts going down every aisle and he had enough money from probably not the show but just doing personal appearances mm -hmm. so we were just going and he would put stuff in uh there was huge stuff uh you know and i think we ended up getting a third person uh because that's how much stuff he got and so we go through it's late at night uh and it probably took over an hour and he got all this stuff we check out go through you know i don't know how it probably over a thousand dollars in toys <laughs> and we go out and there's a limousine in the parking lot running and so we go in it's like a cold november night or something maybe december and so we start putting stuff in the trunk and everything. And then he opens the back and his wife and his child are in the car and it's warm as hell. They, so they've got the <laughs> heater running and they were watching TV in the back of the limousine the entire time while Burt Ward is in there buying stuff for the daughter. And they were just shoving stuff inside there in the trunk. I think we had to strap some stuff on the top. <laughs> and with what? Just like what we had, we had string. rope and stuff. Yeah, uh, that we like would twine. Mm -hmm. You guys are like the Home Depot of toys. Yes. It's just like <laughs> pull your pull there, there your car up. You have <laughs> you have twine. You know, we also had those giant like uh, plastic pools, mm -hmm. and so those and, wouldn't and fit the in cars. We'd have that? to strap them on. Yeah. Uh, so we finally shove all this stuff and it barely fits in this limousine his wife and daughter are in the back burt ward gets in the driver's seat oh my and God. he was driving his own limousine so i guess he bought it <laughs> and he owned it and drove himself and i don't know if he like jumped in the back to get out when he went to places but it was just a weird experience like i've never seen the star drive his own limousine mm -hmm. and show for his uh wife and and child around maybe alfred had the night off maybe. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I was gonna say, that was it i was like i wonder if bruce wayne knew one of his limos was missing that <laughs> night <laughs> oh boy that's funny uh well um as we wrap things up here any last anecdotes or stories or uh, retro specs of the time at Toys R Us. Any last things to share? Real quick, couple, yes. couple little. Uh, oh yeah, we love props. it, man. We we because I was a big oh. Star Trek. Oh man, fan. look at that. So we hold that closer to the camera. That's a, there's like the personal there, I communicator. Think they just re, they just <laughs> repop that. They just yeah, re released that. I think yeah. Uh, so yeah, um, I got oh, man. most of the figures. You know, little data nice. warp, data. Uh, and then also the phaser, of course. Mm. Uh, and I actually uh, just tried it out uh, to make sure it still worked. And yeah, <laughs> it still works. And then, of course, it was 93. So 
uh, oh. a bunch of oh. Jurassic Park stuff too. Oh my Dude. god, there it is! <laughs> That's awesome. That that you're the guy with, that needs a Jurassic Park gate. with Dino damage. Oh, yes. <laughs> we got to get um, in those the, the Jurassic Park gates. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, finally, the the last thing I will say about the Toys R Us. Uh, I was working there in. Los Angeles in 1992 when the LA riots happened. Mm. So Dang. when that started, and you know it was mostly uh, Hollywood and mm. the inner city, but uh, we were getting reports and they were slowly moving. They went down to Hawthorne Boulevard, mm. and then the next big street is Rosecrans, which is almost where we were, uh, uh, or uh, Inglewood. Right. Mm-hmm, and then, mm-hmm. you know, and then it was coming down. So then the next one would be where our store was. So we started sending people home early. The manager and some of the bigger guys stayed in the store to make sure nobody broke it or burnt it down. Then he had some of us take some of the female uh, employees home to make sure they got safe, which was not a very safe thing to do and probably uh you know if anything went wrong they would have been in so much trouble yeah that's not so it's not us yeah (laughs) but uh the store was never uh damaged or attacked uh they pretty much stopped at hawthorne boulevard Mm -hmm. uh burning stuff down but uh yeah interesting times yeah let's see at least I'll run a heartwarming story on this one as we hit the outro. But uh, I had, you know, the whole Toys R Us thing. My mom took me to Toys R Us and everything else. That. Then I got to the level of my, my oldest nephew now, who's way old now. Uh, I took him to Toys R Us because I was like, look, man, you know, I, I gave him the first Toys R Us trip. And I was like, look, we're going to go and I'll buy you. And I made the mistake actually saying, I'll buy you whatever you want. Don't ever say that to a child because they literally took it seriously. So we get into Toys R Us, and at that time period, it was the Power Ranger craze. And so we start going, and he's like, you know, it's the same way that I could imagine myself as I first walked into Toys R Us, the same thing that he had in his eyes. And he walked to the Toys R Us aisle, and then he proceeds to pick out the most expensive Megazoid (laughs) that I have ever seen. And I told him, that was a a tall one, right? That was the tall one. The one yeah, that, that costed like scale or whatever, yeah. The one that cost it, and I remember the price, one hundred and thirty nine ninety five. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was so much back then. That shit's like seven hundred dollars now. Like if you just go with inflation. <laughs> and he he goes, and I tell him, "Oh, you don't want any the figures or the ones on the little bikes or something like that." He goes, "But but uncle, you said I could have whatever I want." And I was like. Oh God, that was the first time I used to like my credit card at Toys R Us. I was like, this is gonna take me six months to pay this off. <laughs> and the the so the heartwarming part of that was just over Christmas. Uh he came because I also bought him out of that the the uh 25th anniversary Optimus Prime that lights up. And so I bought that from Toys R Us for him as well. And uh we were sitting this Christmas and he told me, you know, Uncle, I still have my Megazoid and Optimus Prime. Prime, it, it like you know, almost mint condition in the box at my house, and so he was the last generation that I had known that I could take into Toys R Us. So he still had those items. So that's the aspect that I feel like you know, just the best thing of is that I got taken into it. I took him in, and hopefully one day when he has kids, there's another Toys R Us for him to take some money into. I, I yeah, I'm I'm really hoping that they they are waiting to surprise everybody with an expansion of a Toys R Us that's like something to F with, you know what I'm saying? Like what like we go in and we're like what am I what am I experiencing? Mm-hmm. Cuz I think that that's I really I really do believe that like that that is gone. I, I haven't been able to to find that in a toy store. Um and that and that's a that's a bummer because mm-hmm. I mean, look, we're grown ass adults still buying toys. <laughs> We, we we use the analogy of it being like the costco of toys right like yeah i you know when you go into costco you'll walk in with some maybe intention to buying certain things and then you'll just roam around and go oh wow that's cool or do i need that and yeah next thing you know the cart's full 
that's what Toys R Us was, which was mm-hmm. like you had an idea. Maybe you want to go look at like some of the new G.I. Joe's mm-hmm. or you, you needed to buy a birthday gift for someone. And then you got to just mm-hmm. roam the aisles and discover mm-hmm. things that is missing. Like the physical assets, Target, Walmart, that you know, some of these other retailers, they can't replicate some of the mom and pops, the ones that we mm-hmm. obviously support. You know, they just don't have the, the space to be able to carry what you just saw, which is like all the waves of figures. And so I hope one day uh someone tries to do it um and maybe it starts at a smaller scale macy's is not doing it with toys r us that is not again if you never set foot in the toys r us and you go to see the monstrosity that is this rebrand or whatever that's not what we're talking about i'm hoping maybe kb somebody takes kb i heard Mm -hmm. some rumblings of they were going to do some kb toy stores in like certain pockets of of the country we'll see but uh, definitely miss those days. And I love talking about toys. I love talking about the so places good. where we shopped. And it was awesome to hear Dr. Brantley's uh, take uh, and working there and some amazing stories. Chat, as we wrap things up, final words. Oh, weekly I, paycheck, one eighty-seven ninety. Oh, $187 a week. <laughs> so that could have bought you the USS flag, one paycheck. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, one paycheck. <laughs> Uh, no, I, you know, final, final words. I, um, I think in, uh, I think our, our next episode, I'll, I'll show off what I just recently acquired to start, uh, my rabbit hole findings. Um, but I'm excited for volume three and, uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens. I, I appreciate, uh, Mr. Storm and Mr. Uh, Dr. Brindley jumping on. I think it's, I think it's good. And, and hey, look, like, you know, you guys are obviously welcome any anytime you want to come on. Um, but, yeah, I think uh, I think next week. Um, I think we'll probably get into a little bit more of uh, of like 86 toys. And uh, I don't know, Chris, maybe you and I will uh, <laughs> challenge each other to buy something on eBay. I don't know yet. I got to well, we went and figure that out. Well, we did 1986 as a, a year for toys, and um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to say the next year, 1990. Uh, oh, next episode. So, okay, I'm um, excited about that. But uh, thanks all for tuning in. Subscribe, like the channel here on the Shadow Nose Network. Again, lots of other content as well, including our, our big podcast Fridays at 7 p.m. Pacific time, the yep. Shadow Crew podcast. Um, so keep tuning in, lots of content. Um, But thanks for listening. Adios.